After the long wait, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter B, has finally released his campaign manifesto for the 2023 presidential election. The 62-page policy document titled Our Pact with Nigerians, Creating a New Nigeria, is anchored on seven key areas of security, production, institutional reforms, industrial revolution, infrastructural development, human capital development, and a robust foreign policy. The Labour Party presidential candidate says he will secure and unite the nation, move our economy from consumption to production, embark on comprehensive legal and institutional reforms, and practicable restructuring measures to fight corruption and ensure the enthronement of the rule of law. Mr. B also promises to prioritize human capital development through robust investments in STEM education, health and infrastructural development with emphasis on wealth creation, distribution and sustainable development. Joining us now is a member of the obedient movement, Priscilla Amadi. Good morning. Good it's morning. good to have you on TVC Breakfast. Oh, thank you so much. Good to have you too. Quickly, is this the yeah. final copy of the draft copy? Because people have been asking that question, is this the final <laughs> copy? Of course. I know that's the question that has usually been asked. But so far, as tweeted by our principal, Peter Ruby, that's the copy we have for now. And that's the copy for we're working now, with. For now, means there, there might be another copy. Oh, there isn't at the moment. We have no idea if there isn't. But if it's been tweeted by our uh, Principal Peter Obi, it means that that's a copy we are working with. And of course, like every other thing else, nothing is written or set in stone. If there's a need to adjust anything, to everything. I'm thinking, I expect that to happen because, of course, it's like I said, nothing is ever written in stone. Why does it right. seem that uh, the Liberal <laughs> Party is not uh, capable of just saying this is the document? Is it uh, a matter of um, um, the fact that you guys have not really come together to really decide what you want to do or what? <laughs> okay. Um, we wouldn't say the Labour Party hasn't come or agreed that this is the document mm. because our principal, Mr. Peter Obi, tweeted that document and also stated specifically that this was his pact with Nigerians. So if he the presidential candidate is saying, oh, this is my manifesto. I'm thinking the Labour Party is also on board. And of course, I mean, is this pact with Nigerians again? <laughs> All right. So I'm sure you have uh, gone through every other manifesto and um, seen what um, every presidential candidate has promised uh, to deliver to Nigerians. But well, for you uh, haven't gone through other... I don't I don't bother with other people's manifesto. Why? Why not? Um, because for me, as an obedient, uh, before these manifestos came out, I actually do check up on the candidates themselves. And let's say I was kind of disappointed with um, what happened with the previous administration, which is our current president, Benjamin Buhari, and his yeah. manifesto, and the failure of not being able to achieve most of these things. So... When you choose a candidate, I mean, put all your energy into supporting this candidate. But I, I wouldn't want to, like, I mean, watch any other person's list or read any other person's candidate um, manifesto because I already have a candidate that I've been looking into, I've been investigating, and looking at his precedence and saying, oh, then, in addition to his manifestos and everything, and most of the things he's been saying, mm -hmm. he literally, like, I'm reading his manifesto and I can recognize almost everything he's been talking about. So why would so I... So how to... do you hold the others to account if at the end of the day your candidate perhaps does not win? How do you hold others account? You made this promise and you're, you, you're not delivering on it. Oh, are you saying in the instance where other in candidates the... mean, win? Yes, in the oh, instance yes. other candidates win and your principal doesn't, how do you hold them to account? When you do not read their manifesto, how do you then begin to... Oh, their manifesto yeah. is a document. Mm. That's the good thing about things written in black and white. It's mm. a document. Right. So it's definitely there. Now, if they win, which I highly doubt, because of course, um, we are not also ruling the fact that they would not win. But let's say they do win... Mm. Of course, the document is there for us to use it to hold them to account because, again, so, we are in a democracy. So, and, again, so, majority So, you are going into the battle with only one eye. You are not looking at the other side. No, not that. That's what you are saying. Because the, the candidate. You don't want to find out what the others are thinking. For me, it's in about words, trust. You have closed 
you have closed your capacity to think about other things and how do you compare? When I haven't think... closed my capacity to so are you going to read the other thing? Are you going to read other, other manifestos? If are I want to, to, but for now, are my candidate to? is Mr. Peter Obi. How do you show that your candidate is better than the others? Oh, I'm very sure because guess what? Yes. We have seen a lot of amazing things like, like over what? time. Like what? In various documents. What Little... documents? Various documents and manifestos that have been written by various no, other no, candidates. No, 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 that's not the question you're asking. You the said, question? You, you, said, you said you've compared uh, OB with others. Yes. And he has done amazing things. Yes. What are the amazing for me, it's things? A, it's a, for me, it's yeah. about trust. What right. trust? What, I what, what trust is the basis what, of what, trust? Yeah, what do you build your trust on? To, of course, on his competency, on his character, on his ability to deliver what he said he's going to do. Well, well, and for me, what, sir, what do you say about his character? Oh, yes. Now let's talk about his character as a person. Mm. Um, I'm a service culture evangelist, sir. Mm. And for me, I'm looking for a servant leader. Mm. Someone who understands and not just says it, but does it. And we've seen his precedence over time. He's precedence? willing to roll his sleeves, sir, and get into the mud. I mean, you can look at what happened during the flood. He was literally the only presidential candidate. Everybody does everybody, other everybody, other everybody does flood things everywhere. No, just a moment. Everybody have been doing we this have three major, now, we, have three, we have three major candidates. The three of them went. Oh, how many of them were inside the boat? Do you, do you have to get into the, the boat? Of course, it's about servant leadership, letting connecting with so, the people. So because and of course, we can also cannot minus the fact that we have candidates who are talking to pro, through proxies. I mean. What you're do you mean by talking questions. through proxies? You're asking them questions and they're talking through proxies, avoiding Who's presidential But did, did you oh, read which, the uh, statement this person that you said is talking through proxies said that it's one? about teamship? You mentioned... Teamship? Yes, okay. that is what he but said. But then the president of Nigeria has on his head the role to take charge of the country. You can't keep running things through proxies. It doesn't work. Did he tell well, you... Who no, 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 works through proxies? Not walk through proxies. Who, who talks to proxies? Who communicates to proxies? Through proxies. Did, he, again, did, he, speak yes, the did he speak or not? Oh, I'm speaking meeting. now. Did, did he, he speak? No, did he speak or not? Did he answer? Event? It's not about speaking or not. No. He's answering the question. Has he not been answering answer, questions? Did he answer sure? the question you know or he, not? You know, you're talking about Shiwaju. That's not, I'm not, not talking issue. about Siwaju. Who are you we are talking, talking about? Here is what we are talking about. No, but let us focus on... We are, on talking, we are focusing on my candidate. Yes, sir. let's focus and on his character. Let me ask you questions mm. about him. Mm. What's your answer to the fact that he had an offshore account when he was governor? Mm -hmm. He had an offshore account. Is having an offshore account a crime? When you are governor, it is against the law. Really? Do you know that? Okay, interesting. You do now, know that. Now eh? we are talking. Now we are talking no, about. No, no, no. Do you, talking... do you agree that he had it? And he, he had that. Have you have you questioned him mm -hmm. where he got the money to put in the offshore account while he was governor? Have you questioned him? On that? Oh, he has answered those questions repeatedly. But then, if we are going to no, talk what about has he said about that? that? What about has he said him? about that? No, answer. He what has, has he said, said? When it comes to various allegations leveled on my principal, Mr. Peter Ruby. Mm -hmm. You see, what's so amazing is the fact that a lot of people, what we practice is a case of um, trying to remove the Iroko trees, um, the splint in other people's eyes, while with, yeah, with Iroko trees. The question is, what did he say about that? No, there have been a lot of question. questions that seem to be what happening. No, no, that question. Yeah, that that the other one I want to ask, what did he say about what that? He said a lot of things. And uh, so sure what did he say? What did he say? So you, 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 both of you are journalists, right? Yes. You have done your due diligence. No, you said not always. Absolutely. But what, I'm talking, what but we're when... talking about is the character of our principal, Mr. Peter Obi. And with respect to what he said about his offshore accounts, hmm. um, I, might not be very, I might not be very specific as to what he said, but then there are 1,001 things. We are not looking for a saint. All right. Right. No, but Let's you said he's clean. You're just so not. That's clean. about character. I said All I right. trust his character. You trust his character exactly. that he can, put your, he can take care of your money Let's, while he puts his Let's get back to it. It means I can't no, do what he said. Let's get back one. to why we are here. No, no, there's Which another one. It's his character. Here. It's his character, too. Yes. Another one is uh, he set up um, next supermarket while he was governor. <laughs> what do you say to that? Next supermarket was set up while he was a governor? Yes. 
Okay, I'm well, guessing. Are you not aware of that? I'm guessing uh, that that's in the manifesto we are talking about now, sir, right? No, 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 no. I mean, no, 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 no. I don't have to answer that, that question. No, that's because that's of time. The thing, the thing that's is, because okay. of time. Okay. Yeah, I'm that's guessing that's what is in our manifesto. That's exactly right? what's, what's, what's in, in the manifesto. Exactly. And, and I want to know, since you have um, said that uh, you did not read other people's, uh, other presidential candidates' manifesto, what do you think stands this manifesto out? It's a plan. Mm. For me, the manifesto is not... You see, the word manifesto has been bastardized over time, where people just come say 1,001 things. And right. for me, it's a plan. And not just a plan. It's, it's the drive to... You see, there's a particular phrase that stands out in mm. that particular manifesto. And that's, we will heal Nigeria. Mm. We all agree that Nigeria... There's never been a time that Nigeria has gone through a lot, especially when it comes to the various... The various disunity across board, agitations left and right. So when you see a plan to not only just heal Nigeria, but to also steer the economy from its total collapse, which of course everybody will agree. I mean, we have, <laughs> we have a highest currency, literally, literally buying bread. And of course, we cannot even begin to talk about our dollar rates mm. and all that. And then there's a cost to steer it from where it is, from production, of, from consumption rather, to, to production, production and to be able to, of course, improve the economy. We have actionable plan. It's not just a manifesto. To me, it's not just a manifesto. And also included in the manifesto is their CV, talking about where they studied, talking mm -hmm. about everything about them, and also their past precedents, partial listings, of course, as listed by Mr. Peter Roby. So, of course, our, our manifesto is not just a manifesto. I personally call it like an action plan. And also, of course, there's a pledge in it. And of the plan, well, I was reading through it some days ago and before I had to go through it again because I knew I was going to come here. And I was so impressed. I'm like, wow. Every, almost everything he's been saying various, in various uh, media outings and mm -hmm. various uh, interviews, he showed up in his manifesto. Okay, let me ask you this question. Yes. Um, Labor is supposed to talk about subsidy. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any reference to subsidy. What is his position on subsidy? It's not even mentioned in the document. He's not engaged with the question of oil and gas. What do you say to that? Oh, the oil and gas was actually mentioned, but in reference, when it comes to subsidy, sir, my principal Peter, we have said it numerously, that he's not in support of subsidy in the oil and gas sector because he feels that what's going on there is criminality, is robbery, like it's just been crazy going on there and we've confirmed there's been confirmed claims of all the various numerous activities going on in the oil and gas so it's just like organized crime going on in oil and gas so he's not in support rather he has stated that he would rather support subsidy in health sector and educational sector and that's what he intends to do so if he removes if he removes subsidy from if he believes that subsidy should be removed mm -hmm. um, how is he going to engage with labor Mm -hmm. Labor does not want subsidies removed. Mm -hmm. Why is it going to engage with that? Now, Labor, I, from what I've understood over time and with the agitations with the subsidies, uh, we've seen Labor have concerns, and the concern is basically about the increase in the fuel price. Well, that's what the major challenge is with subsidy. Like, if you remove subsidy, the fuel price will go up. Mm -hmm. Right now, with subsidy, the fuel prices are still humongous. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Some places you can buy, some places you buy as much as 500 liter black market. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have something that is not working, madness would be doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. So you're having a candidate that is not telling you, oh, I would have, I would not remove subsidy, but technically subsidy is there, but then it's not affecting the common man. I literally, the reason I didn't drive down here is because of what? Fuel. Literally, we are having for scarcity. With our subsidy, we are having for scarcity. We are having different kinds of prices, in diff no uniformity in price. Mm -hmm. So now, how, how is subsidy helping the common man if it's not a organized crime, like my principal would say? So what you're saying is that he's going to remove subsidy and he's going to it. be in conflict with labor. And oh. he's, he's a labor candidate. Okay. He's a labor candidate and he's <laughs> going to have a fight with labor, labor. with the labor. Is that what you're going to say? My principal never stated that he's going to have a fight. No, it's not by, by definition. If you are going to remove subsidy, the NLC 
the new peng and all of them are going to come for you. Because that is, that is, that is what is going to happen. Of course, they will come to a dialogue. You see, I, I do not believe that the labor or all the civil societies are unreasonable. Everybody is seeing what is going on with respect to um, the so-called fuel subsidy, aka organized crime, that is going on right now. But then, with respect to finding a lasting solution to the... Con I think it's very embarrassing that Nigeria is, an, is supposed to be an oil country, but we have different forms of plagues with respect to oil, and I will not even begin to talk about the embarrassment of having to see official organized crime going on in the oil and gas sector. It's very, very crazy. So yes, if the labor and other civil societies see that the plan of removing subsidy is, is not going to affect the, of course, livelihood of the common man, I'm very sure that the labor will be very reasonable. It's not the goal. It's not about a just being um, going against subsidy. The goal is about how it affects the Why common man. Why is that mentioned in the manifest? About subsidy. Subsidy removal. Mm. Subsidy removal will not. How do I put it? Subsidy removal cannot be seen as one of the major problems of Nigeria. For goodness sakes, we are dealing with insecurity in this country. Yeah. We are dealing with other things that plague this country. I mean, if you ask me as a member of the obedient movement and a citizen in this country, I think the least of our problem is subsidy. I mean, you could remove subsidy, you could take off subsidy, you could have a full tank of fuel, but how about you driving safely? from one location to another location without being kidnapped. I mean, right now, it's officially a trade. So now, for me, top of my list is economy, security, subsidy should not All right. be the top of my In the economy, one of the most important aspects of the economy is bringing money to the system. Mm -hmm. the, the finance minister has said that we are losing loss and loss of being up to a trillion. Mm -hmm. To subsidy. If you mm -hmm. remove the subsidy, they're going to release a lot of money mm -hmm. into development. That's mm -hmm. what they are saying. So they are saying that removal of subsidy is actually an important economic issue. It's not as if it's a tangential issue. It is very important as a policy for this economy. Mm. All right. But however, might I add, you can remove subsidy, you can add subsidy, but when farmers that are supposed to feed the nation cannot go to the farms, when people that are supposed to move goods from one end of the country to another cannot do that safely, I'm thinking off the top of my head, subsidy will be the least of the economic challenges we are going through. Am I right, Mr. Sam? No, you're not. Thank you. All if right. you have, if you ask me, I'm right. You're not, you're not right because that's okay, a matter we, of we security, have, not a matter of economy. All right. It's not have, a matter but then of security economy. affects the time. economy. Yeah, but we, we have, have limited to make the time. And I right want to quickly. Security. And subsidy is not. I want to quickly economy. ask this question because yes, uh, on the manifesto, he says, uh, leapfrog Nigeria into the fourth industrial revolution through the application of scientific and technological in, uh, innovations to create a digital economy and all of that. When you talk about industrial revolution or all of it, I'm also looking at um, how all of these revolutions we're talking about is also when you place it side by side, uh, climate change and all of it, how we are going to resolve all of these issues. Recall that uh, there were issues of uh, uh, flooding in the country just in recent months, and we're also looking at industrial revolution. How do we intend to you know, marry all of this such that, yes, we are moving the economy forward, but we are also considering climate change, its effect on climate change and every other aspect of society. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm actually glad you talked about that because um, I feel like leapfrogging us right now into the fourth industrial revolution is a matter of SOS. Okay, uh, we have too many manual processes. We have too many manual things going on. And if we if we, why, for, for a country that exports a lot of tech talent, why are we not absorbing it officially into our economy? Mm. Why? Why is it so difficult? I mean, we have supposed tech, but what you see in reality is manual tech. Mm. I don't know if it's the um, aversion to new things or new ways of doing things, or it's just, just the fear of accountability. But you know, because the thing about tech, and if, when you get into digitization, is that it's easier to hold things accountable. I mean, you cannot claim that something There's has caught issue fire. issue of data security. How, how are we going to deal with that? We, we currently... Have we deepened the aspect of the use of 
internet oh, yes. across the country. Yes. And How are we also going to do, deal with that? There are places that you cannot even access. Now, why is that? Mm. That shows failure of previous governments. Mm. Why are we in 2022 and we still have issues with access, even internet usage? I would have joined in by Skype, but I don't trust my network mm. and I live in Lagos. This is the part of the reason why we think that I love this manifesto. Because you have a president or a principal that wants to look into these things. Why are we in 2022 and we are dealing with basic, basic internet access issues? And of course, part of these challenges, of course, is power. Mm -hmm. Power is a major deterrent to these particular kinds of progress. So yes, you're making a very good point. I mean, it would be difficult to digitize the company economy when the internet, we are still dealing with broadband issues. And if you look at the document, there's, invite, there's, there's a plan to also invite both international and local partners. A lot, of, a lot of plans to collaborate, which I have not seen successfully in this current government. There's, there's this silo, at, at, as in a silo approach to things that has been affecting the growth. So yes, it's about time somebody takes the bull by the horn and pushes the country to where it can go. We are, we are literally exporting tech talent. Why are we not using the talents we have. I mean, we are in Lagos. I'm very ashamed to tell you that I'm in Lagos, but I have a very poor internet. Mm. And everybody, nobody in Lagos has one internet provider. Unless, of course, you are living on top of a mast, which, of course, is a safety hazard. I asked about data security. What's the plan for that? Oh, I'm very certain that uh, my principal, Mr. Peter Obi, and his team would definitely have um, a plan to, of course, work with professionals that know how to do these things. You see, we make all these things look like it's rocket science. Data security is a challenge worldwide. And even um, Yahoo and even Google had to deal with it with data breach at some point. So I'm thinking off the top of my head, you have a principal who understands the fact that it is very important to do that and he is willing to do it. But then, are there no professionals? that can do with internet security. We have a lot of people who are very good professionals in cyber security. And I'm very sure that when they are brought on board and given the, child the opportunity to get the job done, they will get the job done. Now, now um, we have we're talking about uh, If you can yeah, ask this about, question <laughs> in <laughs> one minute, because about, we need to about, go. They talked about a uh, special prosecutor, uh, established special prosecutor. That itself has no basis in law yet. Why would you have a special prosecutor to prosecute people who are in government who do wrong or in government office when you have EFCC One minute. and ICPC? Uh, well, how will you relate both of them? In 50 seconds. 50 seconds. I will try to be as fast as I can. Now, if I understand uh, the special prosecutor, there are a lot of angles, gray areas in a Nigerian law that for some reason makes all these cases stay longer. Now, the job of the special prosecutor is to cover those gray areas. Right. And also, he will be independent of the attorney general, federal, as in, in general of the federation, right? Now, the problem we've always had in this country is the fact that nobody polices the police. Nobody checkmates the checkmater. So we just have someone who has the power to checkmate other people, but there is no checkmate on him. All so right. yes, we'll I see it balancing. It yes. Um, uh, Priscilla Amadi, yes. a member of the Obedient uh, Movement, yes. thank you for your time. Thank you so much, and thank, thank you. you so much for having me. It was fun. <laughs>